Yes Have Some podcast is excited to tell our listeners about Dr. Pepper and the brand new collectible cans from Spider-Man Far From Home. Collectors, it's time to make that decision. Are you going to drink these Dr. Peppers or are you going to leave them mint in package? Either way, you got to collect all five cans available now, including the new limited time flavor, Dr. Pepper Dark Berry, featuring Mysterio. Get your hands on all five of the new Spider-Man Far From Home cans from Dr. Pepper, available at Walmart. From the corner penthouse of Spook Central, all the way to Star Killer Base, this is Yes Have Some Podcast. Do I? Yes, have some. Yes, have some. You know, they told me you people were conceited douchebags. The only place in the multiverse where you can love the book, hate the movie, but still buy all the toys. I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. I'm not looking for a friend. I'm looking for a Jedi mask. A what? Please remember to hold on to your butts and get ready to get stressed. With your hosts, Craig Goldberg, Abigail Gardner, and Jacob Walsh. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 152 of Yes, Have Some Podcast. My name is Craig Goldberg. We are very close to Ghostbusters Fan Fest, and we are going to talk about it like this entire episode. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I'm here with Abigail Gardner. What's up, guys? And Jacob Walsh. Ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Good morning, Mr. (laughs) Jacob Walsh. Mm -hmm. That's just how I'm going to get over my stress of knowing what how to answer that i'm just gonna do some weird thing every week okay i don't know how to deal with it i'm just gonna be daniel plainview and say ladies and gentlemen every episode no i'm gonna do this okay in a world where jacob walsh is scared to introduce himself (laughs) is that your best impression maybe yeah is that like your um that's kind of sad will arnett impression impression? that's pretty good that's not my Will Arnett impression. It's the movie like guy. Batman. It's the movie guy. Lego movie. Batman impression. I can do a lot. Name it's anybody. I can do an impression. Just name it and I can do it. Lauren Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think I can do a pretty good Lauren Michaels. All you do is a is a Doctor Evil. But that's what Lauren Michaels is. Yeah, we know. All right. I like this game. You guys name someone, I do a bad impression, you make fun of me. Mm-hmm. That's fun. I was really hoping you'd be like, uh, Jack Nicholson. I'd be like, wait till they get a load of me. Ah. <laughs> That's from Batman. That's my favorite line. But do you, do you, uh, I was about to say, doesn't an impression involve like making your voice sound like them and not just saying a line? Mm. Well, Jake, yeah. Some would say yes. <laughs> what is this? What's happening? I like, I like it a lot. I'm choking some of the Episode 152 when Craig does impressions <laughs> and then chokes. <clears throat> It's, the, it's my best. It's my favorite episode. It's kind of our best work, so enjoy it. Anyways, FanFest is coming up. We just recorded a new Patreon bonus episode for all of our patrons where we did the second part of our Yes Have Some Origins. Got a little serious, though. Yeah. Got a little... Yeah. What was that? It was a little good. Bit, yeah. Well, I mean, you're asking us and you, you started asking about stress and yeah. you, you're the one who asked the question, have, have any of us ever <laughs> dealt with real life stress while recording the podcast? Yeah. Oh, then I'd be like, I held my daughter in her hands Stop. as she died in while, her hands? while recording episode 141. <laughs> oh my God. I wouldn't stop the podcast that night. <sighs> I like Movie Guy. Movie Guy? Yeah. I do too, yeah. He's good. Let's yeah. keep him. Movie Craig's Guy's great. Gonna get, Craig's going to get annoyed because right, that's Here we go. Him. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? 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 Uh huh. I walked into Ghostbusters Fan Fest. No, now it's different. And I noticed a lot of mouth breathing. You're doing your storyteller like impression. like the, It has like a New York. What I'm doing is driving people away from the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Come back. Listen, if you want to get on these Patreon episodes, I talk to you about it every week. I'm going to tell you about it right now. Head over to patreon.com slash yes, have some. You get the full archive for $5 a month. You put the $5 down. You get our entire archive since last July. And then we put two, three new episodes up, preview episodes. We're putting up bonus content. We're going to have some uh, bonus video content we're going to try to put up soon. Lots of good stuff happening over on mm-hmm. Patreon. I really have a lot of fun. For those unfiltered episodes. Yeah. 
going deep, like uh, unfiltered, saying whatever we want. And <laughs> anything we want. Anything. No repercussions. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, but it, I do like that environment, and I recommend people join up. So, And thank you to everyone who already has. Yeah, and we talked about this week. We actually broke down a little bit of our first episode we ever did of Yes, Have Some, which that was fun because we had to go back and listen to the first episode. That was kind of weird. Yeah. Jake, I know it was weird for you. It was weird. I, I, I mean, I didn't even, I didn't even listen to the whole thing. It's just, uh, it's weird whenever you're, you know, podcast or not, anytime you make something in your life, like I know Craig, you used to be in a band and I used to be in a band and whenever you go back and like, listen to your really early stuff, it's like, you know, I'm like, Oh, that's what Ooh. I, that's what we were doing. You know? And I, and it's the same way with like, uh, you know, artwork. Like I go back and look at old paintings or, yeah, or tattoos from the first year. And I, yeah, exactly. Writing. I'm sure written. it's the same way. Anytime yeah. you go back to the very beginning and you, you see how much you've come and, and how much you've learned since then, it's a little embarrassing. Hey, when yeah. my Facebook memories pop up and I see my Facebook post dude, from like eight years dude, ago, I I'm like, what them. the fuck was dude, I thinking? Dude, that's, that's like, literally yeah. the first thing I do in the morning is like check my Facebook memories and delete them all. Yeah, I'm like, whoops. <laughs> that one's not staying. That, is that not, wasn't necessary. That's not savory. Who was that for? But, but most of the stuff <laughs> in the last like three or four years, I'm like, oh, what a cool guy. That was, yeah. that was a it's cool... If it's over the last five, six years for me, I'm like, yes. I'm like, that... That's a cool thing to post. Look at that cool person. Um, so yeah, a <laughs> lot of fun going down memory lane. And uh, but boy, I am excited for the next couple of weeks. So listen, we've got Ghostbusters Fan Fest. We're leaving. This episode drops on Thursday night, Friday morning. Godzilla We're leaving Day. Monday. Mm-hmm. Godzilla comes out tomorrow. King of the Monsters. Jake, Jesus Christ. What, what is your uh, your hype level for this? I heard movie? there were too many monsters in King of the Monsters. Um, I'm very excited. I mean, I'm very excited for this movie. I, <laughs> I I bought. I'm seeing it twice tomorrow. I bought tickets already for the very first showing of the day. Uh, I'm going to check it out at four o'clock. I'm going to watch it again at ten. I'm just ready, man. I, you know, when the first one came out, it was like a, you know, I've been watching Godzilla my whole life. And, uh, you know, besides Godzilla 98, you know, when, the, when 2014 came out, it was like, okay, this is a chance to, to do Godzilla differently and maybe do it right. And I really love, I know a lot of people think there's not enough Godzilla in that movie, but I, I love it. And, um, it's been this like slow buildup. We got Kong. We found out, you know, that the Kong universe was going to be, re- it's just been nothing, but like the toys have been fun. We're getting, you know, King Ghidorah, Mothra, Rodan and Godzilla have not been on screen together in a very long time. I'm just super excited. I can't like, I know fan fest is next week. And like, that's what I'm, you know, that's going to be super big, but like, and until tomorrow, that's Godzilla's kind of all I'm thinking about right now. Yeah. Did you guys know Mothra was a woman? Yes. <laughs> no, but I like yeah. her more now. What do you like I, that I, I called her a woman? I, I didn't like say that. I was like, she's, that's, a she's, a, she's a Mothra. I don't know what that. I just she's didn't know a, Mothra was female. Now I'm like totally going because I'm all about female empowerment. <laughs> um, uh, in, in most of the movies that Mothra is in, I I, I don't know what we're going to be seeing in this film, but in, mm-hmm. in, in she's in a lot of the Godzilla movies. And I, I would say in a good 80 to 90 percent of them, Mothra dies okay, <laughs> and usually ends up like leaving behind uh, a pair of eggs, babies. She'll, uh-huh. she'll it, it's she always lays one egg. There's always one egg and two larvae come out of it. And they usually help, you know, save the day or, or whatever. Well, I hope her storyline is more progressive in this movie. Yeah. She's not just having babies. <laughs> Me too. I hope she's kicking ass. Honestly. She's, well, hey, you say that. But she gets also, her haircut. <laughs> also, Mothra is kind of like a god of, a, of an island called Infant Island. And she's worshipped by a whole tribe of people. And she um, won't even she won't even set a foot unless these twin fairies sing her a song. Oh, she's a, she's a badass. She doesn't, so, she, she she sleeps. A little high maintenance. <laughs> yeah, oh, she's a little bit. She's, she's got a little bit of that Daenerys syndrome. Yeah. I like it. Speaking of Daenerys and shows ending, there was a tweet 
this is way off topic, but I wanted to bring it up. Somebody had a prediction for uh, the rise of Skywalker. It was like if 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 Star Wars keeps up the trend of like Game of Thrones and Avengers and everybody kind of going their own way and living out their final destiny, whatever that may be, mm-hmm. then Rise of Skywalker has to end with C-3PO going back to the forest mood of Endor to live out his days as a god yes. worshipped by the Ewoks. And I was that like, that would be amazing. Holy Dude, shit, that would great. be good. And Luke goes to Tashi Station to get his power converters. <laughs> Finally. Finally. That's great. He's like, that would, well, Luke's force ghost oh, goes yeah. to Tashi Station. Goes to force Correct. ghost Tashi Station. Um, That's what I meant. God, we got some good stuff. So we got Godzilla coming up. And when, we're going to try to do some sort of episode while we're out uh, at FanFest. And, and even if it's a quick update, we'll, we'll talk about our Godzilla reactions yeah. and reviews. Dude, um, that's our first plane cast on the way over. We talk about Godzilla. There we go. Yeah. And then um, real quick, because I want to get to the uh, fuck budget, because I know we're going to be talking all about FanFest. Um, we did a little reaction video on the YouTube channel for the brand mm. new Terminator Dark Fate trailer. Mm-hmm. So Got some heat. Mm-hmm. Ooh, mm-hmm. I love the comments. I've grown. I used to hate the YouTube comments. Now I love them because uh, people get really into it. And I love people who are like, don't down this movie, man. Could be really good, which hey, it could it be. actually sure. could, yeah. could be. But that was not a good trailer. Here's the thing about trailers. Like, I'm not saying the movie is going to be bad. I was just saying the trailer was kind of bad yeah but i do want to before we talk about that if you're not subscribed to us on youtube make sure that you're heading over to youtube searching for yes have some and subscribe to the channel we're going to be putting up a lot more video content especially as we go out Mm -hmm. for fan fest week for ghostbusters 2 fan fest as i've dubbed it and um, Mm -hmm. we want to make sure that you guys are checking it out we're going to be putting up more toy reviews more trailer reactions uh, all sorts of stuff like that and uh very excited about it so real quick though i want to do give a few minutes to the Terminator trailer um, on the podcast here because Terminator is a big important sci-fi franchise and this will be it's kind of in a it's kind of in a weird position Um, Jake you had a really good take on Terminator I'd love for you to talk about so why don't we start with that okay Um, first of all this trailer I thought um I it was very weird watching this trailer. I feel like the first, you know, maybe 30 seconds uh, up until the point Linda Hamilton shows up, Sarah Connor shows up. It it's kind of like, oh, this could be cool. Like, this looks cool. It, it, gave, it gave me a little bit of like a, a hope. I liked um, I liked what was ever happening with like the slow motion, the, the sound of it. The music was sounding cool. But then it it all quickly fell away to me. And I feel like um, I have uh, gone back recently and I rewatched Salvation and I also rewatched um, <clears throat> Terminator 2. Um, but I I think like how many movies are in this franchise? What, what, which how many how many uh, movies do we have at this point? So this franchise this has is six, right? Well, let me go. Hold on. Uh, Hold do on. It. Go through it. You do it. I think it is Terminator. Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Mm-hmm. Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. Terminator Salvation. Yeah. The Sarah Connor Chronicles. Okay. Which is a TV show. And then Six. Terminator Genesis. Then Genesis. And then Terminator Dark Fate. And then this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So out of all of those, right? Yeah. Um, I think there's only one really good movie in there. And it's Terminator 2. I, I, I don't think the first Terminator is a bad movie. But it's not I don't think it's special. I don't think it's I think I think Terminator 2 is a fluke. I think it is a great piece of cinema. It is exciting. It is funny. It is got some scary moments in it. Everything went right for Terminator 2, but not before or since I feel like anything has come close and (laughs) <laughs> it just feels like it's never going to. 
So what you're saying is Terminator 2 is the only good movie as a fluke in the entire franchise, and all yeah, the others are garbage. I, mean, I kind of agree I, with you. No, well, I wouldn't say one is garbage. The first one's I wouldn't good, say slow. it's bad. But also, you know how many times I've ever in my life felt like I'm gonna go watch Terminator One. Fuck no. no. It I doesn't. Mm-hmm. It is a fine movie, but it doesn't have any of the things that are really, that are really. It's almost like a, the same – this is on a much smaller scale, but when you think of, like, the Mad Max movies, yeah, the one that everybody – besides, uh, you know, Fury, Fury Road, Road, yeah, Road Warrior is the one that is like Fury Road. But that's part two. You know what I mean? It's like the first one nobody talks about because that's not the movie that defined the series. Right. Terminator 2 is what Off really – fucking made it popular yeah and it's the only like objectively great movie in the fucking entire series Dude, i kind of agree with you honestly I think there's the first another one's slow and it's got a lot of cyberpunk influence and like it's just not it's not it's just it's just it's just two people running from a terminator there's no like yeah there's, there's no, no Terminator Furlong. on Terminator action. There's no T-1000. There's no yeah, there's Todd. no, there's nothing funny in it. There's no, like, there's no crazy, like, you know, let's pull the arm off the X. It's just like, hey, we're fighting a machine. Yeah. There's no, fra- there's God, a, well, there is Terminator one too. franchise that is in a very similar boat to this, almost like to the T, uh, okay. where the second movie is actually the one that's really great and all everything else is kind of not. I know exactly what you're going to say. And it's Ghostbusters. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> I was gonna say or gremlins, but I thought you were being serious for a moment. No, and I was like, oh, I, what is he so, gonna say? So I, I do really like the first Terminator, but it doesn't hold. Like to me, T two is one of those great cinematic cultural, you know, yeah. things. Yeah. Um, and when when I sit there and I go, well, what is it about Terminator two? Like, I love that version of Sarah Connor. Mm-hmm. You know, the like the super like broken and like, oh, yeah. you know, just she's trying to protect herself, trying to protect the world, protect her son. But she's also a badass. Yeah. Um, and people thought she was insane, but she's literally like she knows yeah. the future and all that shit. Arnold is that's his best performance. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, John Connor. There's, there's just a lot. And I feel like where the Terminator franchise has kind of faltered is that every movie they've tried to kind of replicate what they did with the second one with the second one when you introduced the t-1000 you went whoa this is like a new better terminator and he's he's you know he can withstand more he's got the liquid metal but robert patrick also brought a lot to that character it's a lot a lot of it is him mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of, a it, lot is of it is him like yeah. his facial structure and his like his head movements it's almost like michael myers where mm-hmm. he's not saying anything but he's emoting i mean he does have lines in the movie it's um, what he's not saying and like his yeah his his visual like his face and all that shit it's terrifying but now every terminator movie like for, they they're trying to like remember when t3 came out i was like, oh it's the terminatrix and then like you know, in Terminator Genesis, it's like the, the bigger, badder Terminator. And like, that's not what's interesting to me about a new and improved Terminator is not interesting to me. I care about is I, what I thought I cared about in this movie was that it was going to tie to uh, Terminator 2. Well, this is what I want to say, though. I've, I've watched the trailer a couple times now. And though I do think the trailer it's the most like mundane, like it does everything I think it's going to do. Slow piano music, Sarah Connor shows up really big actions. Like I get it. There's going to be two planes that crash into each other. Just like in Terminator Genesis, that whole scene on the bridge with the school bus and everything. Like mm-hmm. that's great. It, I'm sure it'll look great visually. What's the story. And, the, I, and <clears throat> I know that this is like a direct sequel to Terminator two. I know that Sarah Connor is back. Um, I think you okay? Yeah. Okay. Did you break your toe? No, I just cracked it. Okay, there you go. Hopefully that won't have to be cut. Um, no, we're not cutting anything. I I, I do think this in, in hearing like Tim Miller directed it. He he did the first Deadpool. He's a good director. James Cameron is back. The thing that's interesting to me is James Cameron keeps saying that this movie takes place in a thirty-six hour period. It's a white knuckle, fast-paced thrill ride. That sounds fine. 
But some of my favorite moments in T2 are the character moments, yeah. the quiet moments. When they're arming up, like when out in the desert. arming up, they go to the desert. You see the, the, the voiceover with Linda Hamilton talking about how John Connor sees the T-800 as a father. Fa- like, all of that stuff is really good mm-hmm. and really important. And I do hope that this movie... I think it does have potential, and there are... the. I do agree with you, Jake, that the first part of the trailer, there's some cool stuff, but then the second half of the trailer, it just turns into, like, action shot, action shot, CGI, CGI, yeah. like, stuff we've seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, I'm not writing it off and saying it's going to be bad. I'm also not nearly as hard on James Cameron as, like, some people are, but that trailer did not leave me feeling in that, like, that legacy sequel way that I wanted it to. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I had same. a little too much of an eyebrow raise, like scratching my head kind of feeling at the end of it. So yeah, I wanted it to, to be like, Oh my God, she's back. And she, Sarah Connor, uh, Linda Hamilton does look great and it's cool when she shows up. I actually kind of like that. Um, but if they're just trying to uh, introduce new and improved Terminators, I'm not into that. I'm, I'm much more about like the lineage of the original characters and what they're doing. And now, Jake, you were telling me something today about an article you read saying they are going to possibly like go back into T2. There, well, that's what um, it, it said that John Connor, like they, someone came out, one of the producers or something, they confirmed John Connor is in this movie, and then it also mentioned. Um, that early in filming, there was, uh, there were some leaked shots of, I'm trying to see if I can find this article really quick. There were some like leaked shots of someone who looked like John Connor from, from Terminator two. It was a different actor. And, and there was some, uh, there was some talk of maybe, they were going to be doing some of that CGI, you know, putting, making it look like our like old John Connor, like Ed Furlong. Yeah, yeah. Um, they they came out saying that it is rated R. That's good. But um, yeah, I can't find that article right now. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know we were going to be talking about it. Um, no, it's fine. I I kind of, I kind of forgot that we needed to but because i know it was a big deal that this was me like me too me too and there you go we right. fucking forgot if that mm-hmm. that should tell you right there we we had already forgot that we should be talking about the new terminator movie at the beginning um, of this year it was yeah. on my list of um, most, anticipated. most anticipated films along with once about a time in hollywood which i'm still very excited yeah. about uh that new trailer was great and then uh rise of skywalker so and avengers so there's a little bit of a misconception. The last movie, Terminator Genesis, did not do that great in the uh, domestic box office, but it did. Like, this is a very popular franchise worldwide. I am very interested to see what they do with Arnold Schwarzenegger in this movie because from the trailer, that didn't tell us anything. Um, right. I think people have always long assumed that we would meet the guy who the T-800 model was based on which is fine, but I wonder, like, will this be Arnold's I last? Hate, I, I don't know. Like, I hate all of this, like, having to explain why the Terminator is old looking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why is he Austrian? Why is he uh, old? Like, we have to explain a reason to have Arnold keep coming back. Um, this says, um, Last June, photos leaked from the set of Terminator Dark Fate. The photo making the rounds showed a young actor, Jude Colley, who is alleged to be playing a young John Connor in the film. When the photo was shared, it declared the actor was a CGI stand-in, which means it is quite possible we will be seeing Edward Furlong's young face in the film. So it, that could be a flashback or anything like that. It might not be if they're saying the movie is, you know, a 36 hour period, we might just be getting like a little bit of a flashback to something that happened. We'll see. Hey, they better not interfere with the, uh, the canon of Terminator two, three D. <laughs> that should happen. In my, I, it happened right in front it's of all me. real. We watched it. happen. I waited in line for that shit. <laughs> then it happened. Um, well, listen, go to YouTube, check out Abby and my reaction, and then we'll, uh, we'll keep talking about it. I'm sure there'll be more footage and more Terminator news coming down the pipeline. Uh, real quick before we get to this. I was going to say, God damn it, do it. Before we get to this 
fuck budget, Mm -hmm. NECA revealed today that the John Connor, ultimate John Connor figure with dirt bike is going to be a goddamn San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. (laughs) Damn it. That's an exclusive? Yeah. I didn't catch that part. I did look it up today and I saw the image and then Jake sent it to me in the group text and... It's amazing. It's very, very, very cute, um, and I want it. That is now the third NECA release for Comic-Con that I want. God damn it. Including the Ninja Turtles figures with Shredder, Splinter, and the two-foot soldiers. Mm-hmm. And then the Karate Kid John Kreese figure. <gasps> Fuck. I love that. Have we talked about Cobra Kai on the show? I know... I'm, not till Jake watches it. I'm not going to take over, and Jake, I won't ruin anything. I just am obsessed with it. It makes me... I, like, was telling my parents about it at dinner last night. I was like, guys, it's great. It's about <laughs> bullying. And, well, my mom was a black belt in karate, for one thing. So she Supposedly. was like... Supposedly. Oh. No, she was. I've I never pictures. seen her do anything. There's cool. pictures of her. I have a whole photo album. My mom used to, like, flip people over and shit. She was very strong. Um, So... Anyway, I told her about it, and I was like, you got to watch the show. And I've been telling people about it. Whenever I'm like, oh, it's a YouTube original, I get, like, dirty looks. But it's, like, a legitimately really well-done, well-written show. I think Kevin Smith was raving about it, too, recently. So That means nothing to Back Jake. Me- well, no, he only raves about the things he loves. He doesn't talk about the things he doesn't like. So, Anyways, um, it's great. NECA, I'm going to try my best. I got... Maybe if I get a gift for Splinter. Jake, you've heard that song, Gotta right? get a gift, gotta get a oh, gift, gotta get course. a gift, gotta get a gift for Splinter. What did they end up getting him? You know, I can never make it to the end of that, so <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was going to say, we've never listened to the <laughs> whole song. I don't fucking know. All right, cool. So what we're going to do right now is a Ghostbusters fan fest fuck budget. A lot of alliteration there. Mm-hmm. Before fan we... fest fuck budget. Fan fest fuck budget. But before we do that, we're going to tell you a little bit about Yes Have Some Group Therapy, the official Facebook discussion group for Yes Have Some Podcast. So, Abigail. Oh my God, yes. How do you feel about group therapy? And how do people join if they would like to participate? Well, I feel very good about it. I love everyone that is a member. I'm looking at our group therapy right now on Facebook. It's so easy to join. First of all, just search for YHS Group Therapy on Facebook or yes, have some podcasts. You'll find us. Scroll down, uh, click and ask to join. And then either myself, Jake or Craig will let you in. Um, and then you can post really good stuff about like things you're collecting, things you're wanting to see in theaters or reading and are stressed about seeing the, uh, screen adaptation of it's a, it's a very fun space where people, um, can kind of get together and stress and talk about things. And I recommend you join up. ASAP. Um, I had everyone in the group help me name my car last week when I got it. And Michelangelo was the official name. If I didn't, I don't think I made an actual post. Uh, so I wanted to say thanks for participating in that, guys. Love you. And if you're not there yet, you know, get in the group. Michelangelo. Mikey. The party dude. The party dude. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. So now that you've gotten that off your I chest. Did it. Wait, Abby, I think maybe you should get like a... I know it's the wrong color. Yeah. But what if you got like giant decals that looked like the turtle van? Oh, yeah. And put those on the car. That'd be cool. Like big shell circular like sticker decals. Yeah. Foot stinks. And yeah, like all the. Dude. Yeah. Like a little turtle shell over the gas tank. Yeah. Okay. I do like. Okay. Okay. I like that they have that sticker that says foot stinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that sticker. The Ninja Turtles are so removed from society that their biggest cut down on their arch nemesis, the Foot Clan, is. Dude, they stink. Y'all stink. They stink, guys. You stink. You stink. You stink. I hate how they're all. It's a funny pun, though. It is. It does. It is. They're kind of getting I've like got, it's you, true. I've got a lot of theories about this Foot Clan. Okay, I know There's something else going That's on. That's a there. bonus episode, guys. There's something Sign else going up, on. Patreon. There. All right. Are we ready for this fuck budget? Yeah. Let's Has the it. song played yet? No, it's going fuck, to. Fuck, mother, mother, fuck, fuck. It still hasn't played. Okay. Is that the song? Yeah, it's my song. Hit the table. Fuck, 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 mother, mother, fuck, mother, mother, fuck, fuck. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Fuck Budget. We're back. The Yes, Mm -hmm. Have Some Fuck Budget is the segment where we break down five relevant topics to the Mm. Yes, Have Some universe. Yeah. Jake and Abigail each get ten fuck bucks to spend. They have to allocate their fucks wisely. They cannot overspend. 
God help us all if they do. Yeah. Then I get calls from weird numbers during the podcast. That's what happens. <laughs> the fuck bill collectors. Yeah. The fuck bill collectors. You, you answer. Collectors. Hey, you Dude. answer. Yeah. And it's just Eric from Ghost Corey's like, hi, Abigail Garter, just let you know we're on a recorded line. Oh, my. And uh, oh my. you owe us eight fuck bucks. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I have to reallocate all my fucks then if he's on the line. I didn't know. Okay. Uh, we wanted to do uh, a little fan fest preview. Even if you're not going to fan fest, don't worry. This is still going to be fun. Mm-hmm. I think. You make sure. it fun. Make it fun. Yeah, it's, it's gonna fun. Be fun. We'll have fun. All right. So. Here we go. We are a week and a half from Ghostbusters Fan Fest. We are heading out on a jet plane. Don't know when we'll be back again. Mm-hmm. No. I'm, so. kill- I'm mm-hmm. killing time. I can't find it. I know. I was like, time is money. <laughs> time is money. <laughs> Would we start doing song quotes? All right, here we go. Yes. Abigail. I have it up. Jake. Yeah. Yo. When it comes to the live concert featuring Ray Parker Jr. at Ghostbusters Fan Fest, that will be closing out the show. So let me set the scene. It's about 60 degrees, nice cool breeze in Hollywood. Summer breeze. And Ray Parker Jr. is, I'm just guessing, playing Ghostbusters like 10 times in a row. Because yeah. nobody else wants to hear anything else. Uh, <laughs> well, in, mean, my, in my like dream scenario... He's also learned all of the other Ghostbuster yeah. songs from the part one Jay. and two soundtracks. We're the same person. I was thinking the same. Part. Hey, I wouldn't count on that happening. But yeah. when it comes to Ray Parker Jr. serenading us with all of his hits, but mainly Ghostbusters, no one's going to be like, play your new one. <laughs> <laughs> play, play something off the last album. I hope he opens deep, with those. Deep cuts only. Oh, my God. Dude, it was well, amazing. He was like a Zydeco band for a while. Ray Parker Jr. was there. He played a bunch of B-sides. It was crazy. Mm. Abigail Gardner, how Yo, many fucks do you give? Five fucks. Almost Whoa. my entire budget. I give so That's many fucks. That's so with. ridiculous. No, it's not. It's not no, ridiculous. No, no, not in a bad way. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I know. I like that you think it's ridiculous. I just gave the rest of my fuck scraps to the other uh, categories. <laughs> I care more about this concert. I, I was talking to my hairstylist about it today. Actually, I was like, "Can I?" I was. She was asking what was going on at Fan Fest, and I was trying to explain what a panel was and like what guests were going to be there and photo ops and all that kind of shit. Uh, but by the end of it, I was like, "And then on Saturday night, Ray Parker Jr. is going to close with like an amazing." Uh, performance of the Ghostbusters theme and there's going to be dancers and all this crazy shit. Um, and when I'm thinking about it, I literally get just the biggest smile on my face. I love live music. Well, I think all three of us would agree that we enjoy playing, uh, singing, performing, going to shows. Um, I, I have never been in an actual band. I've always wanted to be, but I will say that I love, love, love live music concerts and the Ghostbusters theme song and that soundtrack is extremely close to my heart. I have very, very fond memories of listening listening to it like when I got heavy into Ghostbusters like six years ago and um I'm really really pumped to see him perform it live I'm pumped to be with all of my friends I just feel like it's going to be the closest thing to I don't believe in heaven or anything but I just feel like being together while he's playing on stage the possibilities of me getting on stage uh crowd surfing during the song and possibly wearing my flight suit I feel like this would be the one thing I would want to wear my flight suit to um and I'm just I'm just fucking pumped about it honestly I feel like it is the thing I care the most about at FanFest, and I'm giving it the most amount of fucks. Welcome back, Craig. I'm back. Craig's back. Uh, what'd you say? Uh, I'm not going to do that whole thing. <laughs> I said I believed in heaven and that All heaven's right, real. That. Cool. So five fucks. That seems like a lot. Yeah. Jake, when it comes to Ray Parker Jr. at FanFest, how many fucks do you give? Well, I, Abby, I love that you gave this five fucks because... I was like having this was I feel like the most unfair fuck budget we've ever had and it's really hard to it was really hard to budget for this one because like every, obviously everything on this list is stuff where it's like yeah we're going to we're going to get to do this this is something that's going to happen mm-hmm. we're going to be around for it I wish I could have given this five fucks, but I, I tried to be fair and, and spread them out. So I, I only gave it two. And now I kind of feel like a jerk. Yeah. Um, I gave it two oh, fucks. I gave, the jerk I, gave store it call. Two, I gave it two fucks, but I completely agree with Abby. I'm super excited about this concert. It just seems like 
Oh, it seems exactly like what it is a once in a lifetime opportunity that's going to happen. And, and we've met, we've talked about this on the show before and I have talked about how we tried to get him at dragon con one year and, and how cool we all thought that would have been. And, and this is just going to be, I don't know, man, this is going to be an experience. Mm-hmm. Like it's literally a song that we've, you know, I I mean honestly if you really thought of, if you really think about it we have all probably listened to the Ghostbusters theme through watching the movie or otherwise we've probably heard that song more than any other song Dude, in the world yeah, in our life I heard you know this, what I mean like I was familiar with that theme song before I ever saw the movie as a kid like I used to see it everybody um, is yeah course, like yeah. that song has been out you know like even though it was a different version it is you know at the beginning of real Ghostbusters it's like it has been that song has been ingrained in, the, in in just in our fucking heads for our entire lives. It's probably my favorite song. Yeah. I hope he gets the words wrong. You know, sometimes when you see like people who, who like maybe haven't performed in a while or, mm-hmm. or something like that and they, they like mix their words up or something like that just yeah. seems like it kind of fun or, <laughs> or maybe fitting for this. I don't know. Who are you going to call men in black international? Opening Things like next the, week. the wrong verse at the wrong time. I don't know. No, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be great. Do, do, and I, do, 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 do. I don't know. I hate that men in black. That's thing the I just one. Said. That was so That's stupid. The one. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah, yeah. Cool. You guys ready? Yeah. Ready. Do All it. right. Doing it. Jake, how many did you give? Two. 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 Abby gave five. Yeah. A rousing competition. Here. Yes. I have some Bobby. Yes. Mm. When it comes to. How could he win the fuck budget? Uh, I, this is, oh We're all winners. All right. When it comes to the world premiere of the documentary Cleaning Up the Town from the Buenos, who have been working on it for a very long time, which is sure to include tons of behind the scenes footage that we've never seen before, Jacob Walsh. Yeah. When it comes to not the documentary itself, but watching it at FanFest, how many fucks do you give? Um, I gave it one fuck. Uh, I it is something that I wish. I feel like this is something that's probably not going to happen for me. Like it, I, I am excited about seeing this documentary. I know it has been um, in the works for a very long time. I'm sure it's amazing and there's a lot of great stuff. But I I feel like when we have one day to do this thing, there's one one day of a festival happening. So many autographs. So many pictures. We don't even know who all the vendors are. We don't even really know what the structure of this thing is like. I feel like it's a little bit. My priorities are not going to be like sitting in a room and watching a documentary while everything else is happening. I don't know. It depends. I guess it depends on how the day is going to be structured. I feel like a lot of our time is going to be. I mean, I don't know. We got class 10, so maybe not. But I feel like lines are always a thing you got to deal with at something yeah. like this. And I know it is a long day for a one day thing, but I'm so scared of not getting everything done that I want to do that sitting down and watching a documentary that's probably three hours or more right. is, is just not on my list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, one thing that I've been keep coming back to is that because it's such a limited capacity that that should mitigate a lot of it's not like when you're at megacon and there's 15,000 people there or whatever like exactly so exactly. hopefully the lines it's won't hard, be it's hard for me to think that way because we have never been to something this small or exclusive or mm-hmm. had like you know the vip tickets for so in my mind i'm thinking about stuff like star wars celebration and dragon con and it's like right. i know it's going to be on a much smaller scale yeah but i haven't experienced that and i right. don't know what it's going to be like and right. also this documentary is uh it, it will be released soon so it's something we will be able to watch right um, right in a, in, a, in a less stressful situation yeah abigail how many yes. fucks clean up the town no i don't want this to be taken the wrong way um by Uh-oh. anyone Uh-oh. i get i'll just be real i'm giving it zero fucks i'm just saying just for the same reasons that jake just said i'm there for getting photo ops autographs and experiencing things that is a documentary which i can watch on my own time later and i wouldn't want to have valuable time at that convention taken up doing that so i'm a little bit stressed out by the fact that it's going to be i don't know if it's indoor or outdoor now if it's indoor 
and it's hot outside, maybe that'll be a nice experience. I don't know. I'm sure the documentary will have a lot of awesome stuff that I've never seen before. And I'll probably listen to this episode like and after the trip and be like, man, I can't believe I gave it zero fucks. It was, it's one of my favorite things now. I bet it's going to be great. I'd probably bump this up to 0.5 fucks because I kind of feel bad, but can't no. do it. It's still zero. I just, I, I already spent. Here's a take. You guys ready for this? Did, didn't yeah. spend. Yeah. I, if they announced tomorrow that instead of screening Ghostbusters the Friday night, they were screening cleaning up the town, I wouldn't be that mad about it. Only because. That'd be kind of cool. I've seen oh. Ghostbusters a hundred times, and though it's going to be amazing seeing it. That's actually a really good idea. That's what I'm saying. I wonder if they're listening. They're not. We have their they're number. Absolutely Who? Not. They're, they're not. Clean up the town people? No. They might be. Laney, Sarum? Laney's not listening. Laney's not listening. Um, <laughs> cool. So we can move on. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's so amazing for them that this has been their passion project for a decade, and they get to premiere it at FanFest. I hope they get a really good turnout. Yeah. Hey, and if... And, if it works out that we can do it, I will gladly I'll watch it. But mm-hmm. um, there's going to be a lot going on. So we will see. True. All right. You ready? True. Yeah. Now. Photo op slash autographs with Ivan Reitman, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, William Atherton. And we just found out before recording, Jason Reitman will be part of the photo op package that we are getting. Dave Coulier, Maurice LaMarche, possibly a few more people. When it comes to these photos and autographs, Abigail Gardner, how many fucks do you give? And again, hear me out with this one. I only had five fucks left to divide between the last three categories. So I'm giving this 1.5, one and a half fucks. Wow. Dude, well, I just... You know, here's something people might... I spent it all on the concert. (laughs) So... Give you a real... I mean... I, I do I secretly give more fucks than actually 1.5 fucks um, I, oh, think I thought you were going to say you hate photo ops. no well I was going to say I'm actually doing this to like mentally psych myself into if I give more fu- if I give fewer fucks maybe I'll be more relaxed going into the photo op you know what I mean like if I if I don't put it on if the you, top okay. of my list if you give fewer fewer fucks I'll be cooler about it and so I'll get better photos there you go. so that's why I'm saying I give only one and a half fucks I probably secretly give like eight fucks about this but I'm trying to do like psych myself into it being a relaxing fun because it, it actually might be kind of like a lot for to do all that because at this point if we're getting more like with Jason Reitman if there's other photo op opportunities like I know that was being redundant but it's like we're gonna have a lot to do in that day so I'm hoping I can kind of roll with it photo ops are stressful yeah they are but they're not no, we've talked about it and not and I would give more fucks also if Sigourney Weaver was added <sighs> Whether or not that's probably Jacob Walsh autographs, yeah. photo ops. These are the legends of your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these are the people that mean the most to me in the world, besides mm-hmm. my cats and my podcast mates. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I mean my other podcast mates. Oh yeah, I have another. Oh, I don't okay. tell you about that. Oh yeah, uh, Jake. How many deep fucks? dish podcast? I'm a deep dish pizza podcast. <laughs> uh, when it comes it's to the a photo, good name. Photo ops and autographs. How many fucks do you give? Um, I, I gave it four. Um, I, I originally gave it three and moved some stuff around, but I feel like this is kind of the most important thing. I think this is the biggest, like it's a lot of big guests. Um, and, and if you, if you count the ones even that we're not getting, you know, completely, uh, included with uh, class 10, there's a lot of people here and, um, I think having something to show for going to this event, having, you know, a poster or, or a print that is signed by just as many people from Ghostbusters, you know, one of our favorite films of all time that we have like spent so much of our life. I have a fucking proton pack in the corner of my room that I've spent so much money on and, you know, going to dragon con for the last, you know, nine or 10 years dressed as a ghostbuster meeting, literally, you know, 90% of my friends I met through ghostbusters. It's just like a big, important thing. Um, in all three of our lives and getting, to meet all of the people that we're never going to, you know, some of these people we will, we may never meet again. They don't do a whole lot of stuff, seeing them all in the same place and getting photos with them. And then just like, I'm looking at this poster right now that I'm going to bring and I'm just imagining it with like 15 autographs on it. Mm -hmm. That's what it's going to look like. And to me, that is the coolest thing ever to have, to know that I'm going to have that hanging 
you know, in my living room with just like all of these, like that to me is the coolest thing that's happening over the weekend. Hey man, it's a lot better than a Slimer mask. I'll tell you that. I'm bringing the Slimer mask. Oh, good, good. Are you really? Bring it. I, I think so. I feel like I have a duty to bring it. Dude, I don't yeah. know. I don't know why. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But I feel like um, people would be disappointed if we didn't yeah. bring it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to at least get some good video of yeah. you walking around Fan Fest wearing that damn mask. <laughs> I, want, I want you in the pool with it. I just feel I like might that's... sell it. Maybe I'll oh, sell it dude, while we're there. Money. Money. People be like, whoa, where'd you get all these answer the call autographs? Not a fan fest. Not here. <laughs> um, <laughs> as collectors, I think, you know, being able to to get those photo ops and getting the signed, you know, eight by tens and signed prints and all that, that's yeah. that's everything. That's we love the experience of being there, but the physical, you know, the 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 merchandise, the signed photo. DVDs, all that stuff, the stuff you can bring back with you and display on a shelf. That's always like, that's it. That's everything as a collector. Yeah. That's what you, that's why we still buy Blu-rays. That's why we collect VHS. You want tangible, tactile evidence of the thing that you love as a visual reminder in your house all the time to, yeah, yeah for those memories and shit you like. I promise myself I wouldn't cry. Okay, <laughs> cool. You guys ready? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Next up. We know there's going to be some news coming out of FanFest about the new Ghostbusters movie because, A, they're making a new Ghostbusters movie, and this is Ghostbusters FanFest. B, it goes into production in a couple weeks. And C, Jason Reitman will be there. And Lainey Serum of Wizard World told us he's going to be doing something. So when it comes to the possibility of Ghostbusters 2020 news and announcements, Jake, yeah, whose turn is it? Jake. It's my it's my turn. Okay, I knew that. How many fucks do you give? Um, I gave it all the fucks I had left. Uh, I had three fucks left. That's what I gave it. Um, Whoa. I mean, I, this is gonna this is a big thing that's happening, uh, especially for us. You know, like this is a true sequel to Ghostbusters one and Ghostbusters two, and I feel like we're gonna get a lot of info here like firsthand it's gonna be like i feel like to us to people like us it's going to be like those hall age star wars you know you where people are getting to see I, I don't think we're gonna see a trailer but like you know when people are getting all the the news it's gonna yes. be like that like i think we're gonna get i 100 percent think we're gonna get casting announcements i would not doubt if we had special guests that are there maybe specifically just for that panel that are in the film like you know whether it's just you know finn wolfhard or whoever i i i don't think that they're that's not going to happen i think we're going to get i don't know we're going to get pictures of something like i think it's going to be a big event and i think we're going to come out the other side of that uh experience knowing way more about this movie than we do now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I well, Abby, you go first and then we'll we can discuss a little bit. Yeah, more. let me open my journal up. Oh, which I was just using. God, as a you're fan. a slave to the journal. Uh well, I have all my actual allocations written down. Oh, I give this two fucks. Um I I kinda wanna take my other fucks from the next category and, and attach it to this because this is definitely um obviously I'm pumped for the concert, but this would be rivaling um seeing that performance when it comes to things I care about at FanFest. The possibility of uh Jason Reitman coming out and revealing information of just like Jake said, it being like a like a Hall H, like a panel or like Star yeah. Wars celebration type deal. I want to see Finn Wolfhard like uh, come out in a stay puffed costume and like surprise everybody. <laughs> That'd be fucking great, man. Um, so yeah, I, I 100% like I want, um, I, I care a lot about casting announcements. And I'd love to see appearances from some of those people and yeah, I don't need to, I'm just going to agree with Jake and like say the exact same thing. I care a lot about the next movie. I want to know as much about it as possible. And I think this is a fantastic photo and publicity opportunity for people, uh, for ghost core and, uh, for Dan Aykroyd and, uh, Ivan and Jason and everyone to get the message across for this new movie and to have all of us as fans, there like excited and reacting. I think it would get a lot of good buzz going. Yeah. I think that, we are going to come out of FanFest knowing the title of the movie and who from the original cast will be in it. Yeah, for sure. I think that's... I, I, I would be very surprised if we come out of FanFest and we're like, well, we still don't know if Dan and Ernie are going to be in Ghostbusters. Like, Yeah. 
What are you laughing about? <laughs> Your notes uh, that you left me. Well, fuck. <laughs> we'll talk about it on the bonus episode. Patreon only. I'll tell you later, Jake. Um, no, but seriously, I think we're going to find out some key info. I don't think we're going to get any footage because they haven't filmed anything. No. But... I mean, footage, no, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of artwork or, you know, pre-production... If anything, you know, I think anything like that. We'll, we'll have a better mm-hmm. sense of what the movie will be like from Jason Reitman because he hasn't yeah. talked about it much. There's been very little like he's been location scouting. We've been following stuff on Instagram. Um, what happened? Talk to me. I, I just I saw the, an Instagram post. What happened? Um, Leo from the the cat from oh no uh, pet oh. cemetery passed away that's really sad what happens oh, so I have a hard time with that I love cats and I love pet cemetery and I love church um I know he was played by several different cats but I was looking I opened my Instagram it posted five minutes ago he passed away well I guess the good news is he'll be back in a couple of days hey <laughs> you know what I don't know if that's appropriate but our condolences and from one cat owner to another and that's awful else loves cats. I hate yeah. that I hate yeah. that yeah. sorry yeah. I anyway. use humor too sorry to add a huge bummer to our uh, fuck budget yes yeah what a bummer what that's a why bummer. I don't read the internet during my uh, yeah. podcast okay yeah you never do I've never done You've it never checked in to Jake Facebook. you okay yeah I'm good that's good. a bummer that's yeah, a bummer fuck it's okay sure. well we should have a moment of silence Fuck, now it makes our jokes all... God damn it. No, now we need the jokes. The jokes are better because we've gotten through yeah, the tough stuff. To but that's like real it. stuff. Yeah, Remember we talked life. earlier about real stuff? Read a stress? Stephen King book, Craig. Or any book. <laughs> now I'm being like very defensive. I love it. Where's our cat? So <laughs> I love my... I'm going to kiss my cat right now. Love all it. All right, cool. So, last but not least, the Dan Aykroyd Paranormal Panel... Who knows if this is even really happening, but we're told it is. I'm giving it fucks anyway. When it comes to the Dan Aykroyd paranormal panel, Abigail Gardner. Yo. How many fucks do you give? I only have one and a half left, so I'm giving uh, one and a half fucks to this uh, panel. I think that it's going to be, I hope it goes on forever, and I hope that we can film it, and I'm excited to see the questions that people ask, and it's. I think it's going to be like probably the fodder for like our jokes for the next forever and i'm excited to witness it in person and to hear dan Aykroyd talk about aliens because it's uh and paranormal shit so i'm giving it serious fucks and that's all i have left to give jake i don't have any fucks left so i had to give it zero but i am very excited about it um i do want to go to this panel i do think um dan Aykroyd is very entertaining all the time, but especially when he's talking about aliens, I, I, I think it's going to be a good time. I don't, oh boy, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to like. Do you think they're even going to be, I bet it's just going to be Dan Aykroyd on stage. No moderator. They're just going to be like, all right, Dan, go. You can t- finally, yeah. we're going to let you talk about this shit for an hour. Get it out of your system. Yeah. There probably won't even be time for questions because I- it's just going to be Dan Aykroyd going batshit crazy. I hope it's like the set of World of the Psychic behind him when he gets up there. I can't exactly. <laughs> God, Dude, that would be so what funny. What if they had Bill Murray moderate? What that? if oh! Bill Murray... Bill Murray... What if Bill Murray only shows up for this panel? Yeah, it would be incredible. <laughs> that would be... That would make sense. Here, here's this one. He's kind of like, Dan, what's going on in the world of aliens? And Dan's going to be like, oh boy, they're <laughs> coming for us. They're coming down. There's UFOs spotted by the Navy. It's been reported for the last four years. What do you think about it, Bill? It's going to cut to Bill and go, a game changer. <laughs> <laughs> there was I'm actually. Ask him about my OVA. Oh, yeah, yeah. And your femininity? My femininity that they're after. Uh, Dan, question. Can we extract some fluids, Dan? If you were a web toed alien, would you try to impregnate me? I, uh, <laughs> is this the moment where we, we should talk about showing respect during panels? Oh, people will Fuck be fine. It. <laughs> people will be fine. People we'll be will be fine. fine. Uh, there was a report in the New York Times this week uh, that the Navy has actually been tracking UFO spottings for the last five years. And uh, they've, there's been multiple instances of Navy pilots seeing hypersonic speed 
unidentified objects and almost colliding with one. What? This was all classified information that was declassified, put in the New York Times, and somehow Tom DeLonge from Blink-182 is involved. Oh, so, oh great. It's the angels and airwaves. It is. Got it. Where are you? I'm flying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, every time you talk about Dan Aykroyd, you end up talking about Tom DeLonge. Dude, they're like peas in a pod. I'd love to hear their podcast. An escape pod. It would be called <laughs> Peas in an Escape Pod with Dan Aykroyd and Tom DeLonge. No, it'd be called All the Small Things. <laughs> Not the budget for answer the call. Boy. <laughs> Get off my lawn. It costs too much. <laughs> it costs too much. <laughs> oh, this was fun. We had fun. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the... Uh, <laughs> Oh, that's it, guys. That's 152. Well, hold on. Oh, no. We got to do our plugs. I want to know if there's any more final thoughts about FanFest. Any last minute, this is what I'm looking... Because I didn't include everything on FanFest on the fuck budget, but is there anything else I missed that you're looking forward to? Abigail. Breakfast. You didn't put breakfast on there. I would give that all of my fucks. Well, I didn't put it on well, there. Well, that's why it's not on there. Yeah, yeah, because, like, you know, that's something for me. I'm kind of nervous about the breakfast. I feel like it, I feel like it could easily be... An awkward kind of meeting. I, I'm excited for it, but also, I don't know, man. It's just like, what's it going to be like? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking yeah. of like hotel continental breakfasts and how awkward it can be to come down in like my pajamas and how I don't like to be around people early in the morning. But I feel like this is, we'll be up, we'll probably have already had like a pre breakfast. So hopefully. It'll be good. For sure, yeah. Pre-breakfast? Yeah. No. My hunger will be sufficed for the first time that day in the presence of greatness. Mm -hmm. That's because you guys will be with me. Mm -hmm. um, right. It's going to be great. It's going to be whatever it is. Like, I'm excited about the whole trip. I think, listen, there could be bumps in the road. They've never done something like this. I am expecting it to be a great time. I'm going to mm -hmm. stay optimistic. And, uh, you know, hopefully Ray Parker Jr. is taking requests. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to write only Ghostbusters. And Five Flip times. City. Learn Flip City. <laughs> On our own. <laughs> what if you played the Yes Have Some In Space theme? <laughs> Dude, let's get up there and do our intro live for everybody. Dude, they need to let me... <laughs> They need to let me introduce Ray Parker Jr. And then I'll introduce him just like the guy from the beginning of the busted video. I'm like, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Ray Parker Jr. Like, he's like Swedish or something. Dude. I'm watching that video as soon as we go. He better go into a mix of live. Because like, God, I wonder if he's seen love, Bustin. If yes. he was like, Dude. if he was in tune with like, you know, the community, he definitely would. Right. Yeah. God, that would be so fun. I feel like most artists, is good. He probably does. He has to search himself on YouTube. I'm, I'm sure. afraid to no bad. Bad. <laughs> hey, by the way, if you've never seen Bustin, search Bustin on YouTube and uh, you'll a, thank us later. Yeah. Good luck getting that out of your head. All right, everybody, listen. We got a fun couple of weeks coming up, but now it is time to say goodbye. Yeah. And I wrote a song about it. It goes like this. Say goodbye. No? No, there's no song. But I did want to say that if you would like to check out Yes Have Some Podcast and indulge even further than just listening, you can find us on social media at YHS Podcast, mm -hmm. Instagram, and Twitter. You can find us on Facebook. The official yeah. website is YHSPodcast.com. And also, I got to tell you, mm. we got Facebook group therapy we already talked about. Talked about it. The official discussion group. Mm-hmm. And if you are a subscriber to Yes Have Some or you're listening, we do ask you to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. All you got to do is go to iTunes, search Yes Have Some podcast, leave a five-star review, tell us what you think. We've had such glowing reviews, and we would like to, uh, we'd like to keep it going because it helps us out a lot, helps bring more people to the podcast. We've had glowing reviews. Yes, it's great. People like us. I do. Except, for the, few, one, yeah. except for the one guy who was like, these three just like to hear themselves talk. That was so long ago, and it was true. But, but hey, I was about to say, also, that is true. Though. It is true. I love yeah, you. Nobody guys. asked for this podcast. Yeah. We started doing it. Yeah. Listen to our origin story. Come on. Yes. So, Whew. subscribe to Yes Have Some Podcasts on iTunes. Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast app. And we will see everybody out at Ghostbusters Fan Fest yeah. 2019, Woo. celebrating the 35th anniversary of Ghostbusters, the 30th anniversary of Ghostbusters 2, the 10th anniversary of Ghostbusters the video game, and the three and a half anniversary of Yes Have Some Podcast. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Gonna be at the pool. 
be all over the shuffleboard courts. <laughs> Jake? What is shuffleboard? Eh, it's like a game with a... Uh, is that a real thing? A court, and you, you push... I'm not so sure. It's like, so Sorry. it's like golf. Yeah. No, it's like... Craig? It's like curling it's in four territory. square. I don't know. Four cool. Cool. It's like four what point. is curling in four square? <laughs> I, I need to tell... I thought that was an app. Okay, hold on. Jake, have you ever seen the movie Dodgeball? Okay. Yes. All right. Well, that's a game, too. For Jake, so that's what we're going to play? So we're going to play dodgeball okay. on the Sony lot. They'll love that. <laughs> we we just go in and just whip a ball at Dan Aykroyd. Yes. What? We just wanted to play some dodgeball. Dude. I thought Ben Stiller was going to be in Ghostbusters 3. We thought it would be funny. <laughs> I'm bringing a symbol with me. <laughs> oh. Just in case? I'm yeah. bringing a symbol just in case I see J.K. Simmons. Dude. Dude. I like that. Sir, I do too. sir, um, sir, why are you bringing a, a Zildjian symbol onto the Sony lot? Oh, I just want to throw this at J.K. Simmons' head. And they just be like, it's J.K., okay. J.K., it's okay. J.K., J.K., J.K. J.K. Uh, no, it's going to be great. We're very excited. We're excited to see everybody out there. Please come say hi to us. We're not yes. going to come say hi to you if we don't know you. Yeah. Because yeah. it would be very presumptuous of us right. to walk up to somebody and be like, hey, you you know, yes, I was a podcast. Yeah. Right? That is us. Yeah. But... Come say hi to us if you see us. We do have a little bit of merch to give out. We got mm-hmm. some new buttons, sure do. some stickers, all that kind of stuff. And we're going to be hanging out. Please come hang out with us. We can't wait to see everybody. Yeah. We will see. Hotel party. No. I'm making that happen. No, you're what? not. What? We're going to have a hotel party. No, we're not. We have a podcast <laughs> in our hotel room. Everyone's invited. Hey. Paul Feig's going to show up. I will, if, if we could get 50 people to come to our hotel room to have a live podcast, I would do it. Whoa. What about five? Would or you do five. it for five? It's going to be John Yerkeva. <laughs> Hal will be there for some Hal's reason. Somehow <laughs> Hal shows up. <laughs> hey, I also had this idea today. This is my final thought. Whenever we opened up Yes Have some studios, it's like a full thing, and uh, we're, we're like uh, taking over the world and stuff, um, we're going to have to have Hal and hire him to be our front desk guy. Understanding that he won't do anything, he won't do that job at all. No, he's like. But April everybody London. will know who he is. Yeah, yeah. And nope. we will be completely happy to have him there. I would can't wait. Yeah. I, the day that I can pay Hal a salary, I will do it. Dude, yes. That's why we're doing this podcast. <laughs> it's Just all for Hal. It's all for Hal. <laughs> Thank you, Hal. Love you, Hal. Hey, I hope uh, hope he listened. Me too. All right. He's gonna be at our front desk. Bye, no, everybody. It, it's actually better if he doesn't. Yeah. It's better if he doesn't. All right. See you next time. Bye, y'all. Love you. Bye. Bye, Bye FanFest. Bye, uh-huh. FanFest. That's weird. What? All right. That's good. Bye. Bye.